Hey everybody, it's Eugene. Today what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about the Cloud Compare Viewer. Now many of you are familiar with Cloud Compare, but you may not know about the CC Viewer. And it's sort of tucked in there quietly and a lot of people don't know about it. But what's great about this little viewer is that it solves the problem regarding sharing data between people and maybe the person you're sending it to isn't technical or doesn't have the same software that you have. And so it's a very simple way to uh, share data. And it's right here on my screen. Screen. So I'm showing you, I just got a, uh, this is a point cloud from Recon 3D, uh, something I've scanned and you can see I can just bring it into the viewer and uh, just simple tools, you know, moving it around and that sort of thing. Now you'll see though, I am missing all kinds of buttons. So I don't have all the complicated buttons and the whole interface of Cloud Compare. And the great thing is this is something that you can share on a USB key. So you can hand it to somebody and they can run it directly from there. So let's get started. I'm going to tell you how you can get going here and I'm going to bring up uh, the Cloud Compare website here. Okay, so it's cloudcompare.org. Now normally this is where people go to download Cloud Compare. So if you go to the download link here, I'm going to click on that. You'll see that we've got, um, you know, the, the latest uh, beta and all this stuff here. And then you've got the uh, latest stable release. Now, I'm going to be working with the latest beta, okay, the 1.4 beta. Uh, there were a couple of bugs in the... Um, in the uh, version over here, the 1.4 version. So I'm working with 1.41. And you you will, of course, need Cloud Compare to package all the data as you normally would. And then what you would do is you just save it as a bin file, which is the sort of the native format for Cloud Compare. And then you can do some different things with it in the CC Viewer. Okay, so over here, let me scroll up here. It says CC Viewer Unified 1.41 Beta. So this was just put up there very recently. If you click on it, it says it's an archive version and it's just a zip file. Now, if you go to Cloud Compare, you'll see that you have the installer version and the zip version. So the archive version here is only uh, an extracting folder and it basically has everything that it needs to run. So it doesn't actually install. And that's because you can unzip that folder and put it on a USB key and everything that it needs to run is contained inside of that folder. Okay, so now I've already done this, but if you download this file and extract it somewhere, I'll explain how you can set it up and sort of do everything that you need to do. But first things first, you need Cloud Compare. So let me switch over to Cloud Compare and I'll show you what's going on here. Okay, so I've got Cloud Compare open and I've got uh, the file here, a point cloud. So this was scanned with uh, Recon 3D. It's, it's a point cloud. If I get really close, you can see all the points here. Uh, but it could be a 3D model from photogrammetry. It could be whatever it is that you want. And I've just done some really simple things here. I've got some point labels that I've placed here and I've also created a uh, just a, a measurement here using the distance. And that's enough for me. Okay, so you can throw other things in here, whatever it is that you want. But the key here is when you save it, okay, so if you go over here, I have an old habit that I just hit control A and I highlight everything. Um, it's not absolutely necessary, but you have to make sure that everything is selected here, at least at the high level. And when you do that, just save it. And when you save it, you're going to save it as a bin file. So let me go like this, but you'll see it says cloud compare bin right now. Okay. Now there are other formats you can save as, but, um, okay, this is not working here. There we go. Um, you can see it's got other formats, E57 or whatever, but if you do that, you're not going to have all the labels and everything else. And the Cloud Compare Viewer works with the bin file, so make sure you do that, okay? Uh, that's the best way to package everything. Now, I've already done this. I called it the red car, and it's already done for me, so I'm not going to do anything else. Okay, so once it's saved, we now have to start talking about what we do on the USB key. So basically, just a USB here. I'm going to put it on there. And then when I plug it into my computer, there's going to be a batch file. We're going to double click on the batch file and the batch file will just make it run. And let me see if I've got something up here already. Yeah, here we go. So I've got something here. It says, uh, this is my E drive. And this is what you get when you unpackage the, uh, the zip file. Now, actually what ends up happening is there's a folder inside of a folder. So, um, I take the main folder with all the files in it and then I pull that one out. I don't take, there's like a root folder and then a subfolder. So I use the subfolder and I put that on the USB key and it just makes the file paths a lot shorter. So I have it here. It's called CC Viewer. 
And when I double click, so this is what you're going to be downloading from uh, the Cloud Compare site. You'll see here there's an application file, okay, or an executable file, and it is the CC viewer. That's what actually runs. So if I just run this right now on its own, Basically, I get the software that has nothing in it, okay? There's there's nothing inside because I haven't told it what to load. Now, you can tell somebody to take the bin file and just drag and drop it in here. So if I go back to the if I go back to the folder that I had before, let me just put that on the other screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the uh the red car file if I can find it. There it is. And if I drag and drop it in here, you can see I've got the little uh, icon here. Let it go. And you'll see that it loads. Okay. But I want to make it really simple for people, especially people that are not technical. You got to remember sometimes if you're dealing with people who are judges or juries or investigators, they may have no idea about 3D. They just know the real, real basics or they know that they can manipulate certain things with their mouse. And then that's about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a batch file. And now if you're wondering what a batch file is, let me bring that up here. So this is the batch file that I'm going to be using right here. Okay. So now I've renamed it as double click to start. So the instructions are very, very clear. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to open this up in notepad. So it's uh, available for you guys to see. And I'm going to make this really big. So what the heck is this uh, batch file all about? And there we go. Now you can see that nice and clear. So um, these are just some, a uh, couple of commands, uh, that when you open, when you double click the batch file, it'll run in, uh, as a Windows command. So the first one says echo off. Um, I think that just, uh, shuts off, uh, the different commands. So every command it does, it just won't show it in, in the display. So it just kind of keeps it hidden and just keeps things a little bit cleaner. Um, and then here it says, well, look, if, um, if exists, so if D colon CC viewer, so it's going to go looking for this one, this one, and this one in different locations. So you got a D drive, you got an E drive, and you got an F drive. So, I don't know what the person's computer is going to have. And this is one of the risks that you may have here. So if they just have one um, hard drive, like a C drive, then when you plug in a USB key, it may be called the D drive. It may be called the E drive. Um, sometimes people have two or three drives. So you may actually have to add to this. You may actually have to add a G drive or an H drive or something like that. Now, in my case, I just got D, E, and F and it works, but I just want you to be aware of that. Okay. Um, so what's it doing here? It says, look, if this, if this exists, if this red car bin file exists, okay, over here and all this stuff here, what it'll do is it'll run the CC viewer and it's going to load this file that I have called, called red car. And it's the bin file from cloud compare. Okay. If it doesn't find it on D it'll look on E it'll do the same thing. And then over here, it'll do the same thing again. Now I've added one more little, um, I'll call it a switch or a little command. And that is this negative max sign over here. So when it runs CC viewer, if it finds the file, it's going to run CC viewer. It's going to use this command max, which basically is just maximize the window. If not, you'll see when I first launched, uh, the, uh, the viewer, it just came up with a little window. This is going to maximize it in your screen. And so I decided I'd put that in there just in case. Uh, and then finally at the very end, once everything is done, it's just going to exit and you're not going to see anything. And it basically closes out, uh, all of these commands. So what I'll do is I can make this available. I can just type this into the uh, description of the video down below and this way you all have it and you can modify it as necessary. So uh, from there, let me put this down. Let me go here and let me show you what's on the USB key right now. So there you go. So what I've done here is I've got the batch file. So if I double click this, you'll see that it launches. Okay. Just like that. That's great. But it's going to be looking for, oops, sorry. It's going to be looking for the red car bin file. And I've placed it in the same directory as the, um, the, the cloud compare viewer. So if I go in here, let me see if I go to date modified. Yeah. You see, I've got the CC viewer here and I've got my red car bin file right here as well. Now it doesn't matter where I put it. In fact, I probably could have simplified it just by putting the red car bin over here and then I wouldn't have to write this path. But I just thought if I just, you know, have a file, the batch file and a folder, then that's simple enough. And I can even rename this folder. It doesn't have to be called CC viewer, you know, 1.41 or whatever. That's just what was extracted with the file. I could rename this. And if I do rename this, then I just have to make sure that I rename it in uh, my 
my batch file here. So all this stuff would be renamed as something else. And you have to do it to each and every one here. Now, let's, uh, let's launch it anyway. So you copy it to your USB drive, okay, like that. You plug it in. Once it plugs in, usually uh, some people have their computer set so that the uh, file explorer will pop up and then double click to start. Great. I'm going to do that. And there you go. It's maximized the window. Now from here, there's really only a few controls that you need to tell somebody, okay? So um, left mouse button is to rotate, okay? Right mouse button is to pan, and the mouse wheel is to zoom in and out. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And there isn't a lot that you can do here. There's not a lot you can really play with. There's not a lot you can really, you know, mess around with. Um, there are some things like clicking on points and creating new labels. If this becomes really cluttered, for example, you can right click on these labels just at the top here and it'll just wrap up the, uh, the data that's underneath there just to kind of keep it a little bit simpler. You can also highlight something and then delete it if you like. Now that's not going to modify the original file, but um, it'll just wipe some things out if it's interesting for you, whatever. And probably the biggest thing that's helpful is going to be go up here and it says F1. And you got a whole set of instructions here, okay? So F2, set orthographic view, F3, object center perspective. So you can toggle the, the navigation. There are default views up here. Um, you can see here it says if you shift left click, uh, you can spawn a label, right? And then if you right click on a label, you can expand or collapse it. So for example, if I shift and left click on a point, so let's say over here, I'm gonna click, you see that it's created a new label for me. So if I shift left click, Okay, it's done a, a new label for me. That's cool. Uh, if I want to get rid of it, I highlight it, and I'm going to hit the, the delete button. There you go. It's gone, and that's gone too. Okay, so I don't need it there. It can be a temporary uh, marker or label to give me some information about the point. You can't do measurements right now, so that's not possible. It's really for viewing or whatever. But if you know what measurements are important, like this one here, well, you can wrap them up to start with. You don't need to do them after. You can just do them all before, and then they'll be in here. No problem. What else? There are some other options here. Okay, so they talk about like the camera parameters, the display parameters. Um, so for example, on the display parameters, if you go to colors and materials, there has background. So if I just want that as a black or something like that, I hit OK. I don't want a gradient and I go apply. You see that it changed everything here. So now I got a nice black background, which I, I don't know, I tend to like. Uh, so that's OK. Um, there's also camera. Uh, properties, if I click on that, and let's say, for example, I don't like the field of view. It's at, set at 50 degrees right now. Let's say I want a wider field of view, like at 80. I click OK, and then when I zoom in, I just I get this different kind of perspective. When you hover over the top left here, you'll see it says default point size. I can increase this to make it look more solid. And that the, the same goes with the line width. So if I had, I don't have any polylines here that I can show you, but it would uh, basically do the same thing. So, uh, ultimately, that's pretty much it. Uh, there are a few other little bells and whistles in here that you could use, like full screen mode. You can toggle um, off and on kind of thing like that. Uh, if you really want to maximize it in your window, just hit F11 again. It'll go back down. But this is a really simple way to share data. And so, for, for example, some of the Recon 3D users that are out there, you want to send this to a client. Uh, if you want to send it to somebody for inspection, this is a really easy way to do it. Package it onto a little USB key and ship it off to them, or just package both files and tell them to put it on a USB key, and then once it goes in, it should work. And the most important thing is going to be the file path. That's probably what's going to mess people up the most. So if that becomes a problem, you can just launch the CC viewer and then find your bin file and then just drag it, drop it in. That's the other way that you can make it work uh, pretty simply. So that's the CC Viewer. It's a cool little tool. I think it's great for sharing data offline or on a USB key. And uh, yeah, I'll put the script down below so that all of you have it. And again, if you're interested in downloading the viewer, make sure you go to cloudcompare.org. Go to the download page here. Scroll down whenever you see the CC Viewer. Uh, this one says Unified. I, I'm currently using the beta because if you try this with the current stable release, there's going to be a couple of little bugs. It's not going to run the same way. So make sure you use the 1.41 1 beta or later, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, that wraps it up on this one. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.